Great. We have a, a final additional uh, speaker. That's uh, Jeff Gerhardt. Uh, Jeff uh, is a senior staff member on the House Ways and Means Committee, where he works closely with Congressman Pete Stark. Uh, Jeff, uh, as you can imagine, uh, uh, works uh, uh, worked uh, pretty hard on the health reform legislation, but uh, before that, uh, worked uh, uh, to write the High Tech Act and was one of the kind of one of the key staff uh, drivers on that legislation. So uh, we're fortunate to have him, and he's going to share a few remarks with us. Uh, thank you, Sachin. Um, I'll take credit for writing the parts of the High Tech Act that people like, and I'm going to disavow me <laughs> myself of the parts that people don't like. Um, but um, unfortunately, Congressman Stark, uh, who wrote an article for this issue about congressional intent of, of high tech, couldn't be here today, so uh, asked me to come in his stead. Um, and uh, although I'm speaking on his behalf, um, you know, these are my own comments, not to be attributed to him or the other members of the committee. Um, I think the, the panelists here be, before me have done an excellent job of articulating why, you know, the promise of health IT, why it's generated so much interest, all the, all the good things that it can do. It can improve the clinical experience for patients. It can, it can improve their safety, their outcomes. It can improve efficiency. It can supercharge healthcare research. And it also will become, I believe, the underpinnings and, and is the necessary component of a lot of the sort of payment and delivery reforms that everybody thinks are going to continue to, to drive improvements in quality and down costs over the future, things like accountable care organizations, medical homes, um, things like that. So those are, it's a necessary component to that. Um, but all this promise is tempered by the fact that there's been historically pretty low adoption amongst uh, providers of health IT. And there are lots of reasons for that, which I won't go into. Um, but that explains a lot of the legislative interest over the years. And it's been bipartisan in terms of trying to stimulate the adoption and use of good health IT systems. Um, all that sort of came to a head in the stimulus bill where President-elect Obama um, said to the Congress, look, I, I think that this is such a high priority. I think this is so important and such a necessary component of the health care reform bill that I want to work on later that I want you guys to get started on this right away. And so he gave us the green light to include it in the stimulus bill, put some real money behind it, and, uh, and, and we sort of took a lot of the ideas that had been around and put them together into a unified, cogent uh, set of policies that, that were in the stimulus bill. Um, when people ask me, well, what, what is the High Tech Act? How does it work? What's in it? I usually point to four pillars. One is the mandate and empowerment of uh, the Office of the National Coordinator. It did exist before, but High Tech made it stronger and gave it specific tools and jobs to do to try to get as many Americans uh, with electronic health or medical records as possible um, within the decade. Um, and, it, and it asked them to sort of herd the cats, if you will, in terms of getting these things up there and online. Um, the second thing it did was modernize the security and privacy protections that are out there, but uh, were developed before health information technology really sort of started to develop. And that's an important thing um, for us to do, I think, and strikes a balance between keeping private information private while also not locking in a vault um, so that it sort of can't go anywhere and is not useful. Um, the third thing that HITECH did was to give resources, um, money in terms of grants and other programs um, to provide the infrastructure and the human resources necessary to make uh, meaningful use uh, really meaningful. And then, you know, finally, the meaningful use incentives in Medicare and Medicaid, um, which in large part were the brainchild of Congressman Stark. Uh, if you look at the legislative history, he introduced a bill in 2008, which first had this concept of we're going to provide incentives within the Medicare program to doctors, to hospitals that meaningfully use uh, health information technology. And I think this was a, this was a leap in terms of saying, well, we're going to have real money. This is so important. We're going to put real money behind it. We're going to put the power of the federal government's 
Medicare program behind it. It's the largest insurer in the country. And, and, and not only that, but these, this money is not going to be handed out just for adoption of health information technology. It's going to be available for hospitals and clinicians that use it in a meaningful way. It has to have the capabilities to improve care, improve patient safety, make care more efficient. And it can't just sit there like an expensive paperweight on the doctor's office. It has to actually be used. And we're going to measure that. And that's what the incentives are going to be available for. And it was a key insight that he had. And it, and it became part of the High Tech Act. And, um, and so you know, I, I think the other important thing about meaningful use to, to, to keep in mind, and I think another insight of it was Congress was smart enough to know that it's not smart enough to try to prescribe what exactly that means, meaningful use. And so it kind of created an, a somewhat open criteria and said, you over at HHS, you're smarter than we are. You figure, you figure it out. And not only that, but make it evolve over time. And so that, so that it keeps pace with changes in technology and changes in, in medicine. And not only that, but put everybody up on an escalator. So have it get progressively more sophisticated over time so we're not stuck with you know, just one flashpoint in time and that becomes the criteria. And I, I really, I have to hand it to the Office of the National Coordinator, HHS, CMS, and the stakeholder community at large for I think doing a really um, good job so far of um, effectuating uh, Congress's ideas about how this would work. So I, I, I thank you very much for having me here today. Are there any questions for Mr. Gerhardt? Are the efforts of um, Republican dominated House of Representatives going to undercut any of the provisions of high tech, do you think? Or is it going to move forward unimpeded regardless of what's going on in Congress? Well, I mean, I think if you look at the, at the history, uh, this really, it has been a bipartisan idea. <laughs> Uh, the approach taken by Republicans and Democrats uh, has been a little bit different, but the, the goal, the end goal itself has been traditionally bipartisan. I think uh, former Speaker Gingrich wrote an article for this um, which sort of put that uh, out there. Um, now that's not to say a lot about this Congress and this House of Representatives because they appear to have different priorities. And so I, I do think that there may be a legislative attempt in the House to try to change or strip back some of the funding. Uh, that's a perhaps. Uh, they haven't said that explicitly. Um, but I also am, am confident that, um, that it's not going to happen at the end of the day. There's enough members of the House that will push back on it, that it, it will have a difficult time getting through there. If it does get through there, there's enough members of the Senate vest in it that it should stop there. And of course, the President who made this his priority in the first place, who really does believe in this, uh, is also there at the end of the day. So um, there may be attempts. Who knows? We're just beginning to see what's going on with the new, the new Republican in Congress. But uh, it, it may happen, but it, I don't think it'll succeed.